Honestly, I'm not sure how to weigh in on POW world with my opinion. It's got crafting, it has capturing wild creatures that look like Pokemon, it has sandbox-based building mechanics, assembly line management mechanics, it has boss fights, breeding, lucky pals, which are basically shiny Pokemon, survival mechanics with hunger and pal sanity. To echo what others have said, there are qualities from Breath of the Wild, Pokemon, Legends of Arceus, building mechanics from other popular games like Valheim or Raft, if they end up adding in online PvP, it's going to feel a lot like Rust. The inspiration and comparisons can go well beyond what comes to mind for me. In a three-word summation people have been using since seeing the concept of POW World and its promo video, Pokemon with guns! In this video, we'll go well beyond that simple catch-all phrase. But the fact that you have Pokemon-looking creatures and you have first-person shooter mechanics that contrast is what sticks out for people, mostly because it's combining two extremely popular genres. Throw in crafting and base building, and I don't see how this game couldn't be popular. It's got the stuff everyone likes, doesn't it? And yet the question I keep finding myself asking is, am I having fun? And my answer is kind of multifaceted. POW World was developed by Pocket Pair and released January 18th, 2024. Technically, POW World has saved itself some criticism because it's currently in early release status. But that's not really important to me, I'm going to review POW World as is. But I do want you to know that going into this review. And of course, later on down the line, the developers will probably adjust things, implement better hacking prevention software, add features, tweak the mechanics, and PAL World's gameplay experience will undoubtedly get better. Games normally get patched and improved as time goes on. And as it is, PAL World has some way to go before it can be considered finished and polished. I think it's important to talk about the copyright stuff POW World might experience in the not-too-distant future. Honestly, I'm hoping Nintendo doesn't seek legal action, but you can just expect anyone who has any similarity to existing intellectual property to get the attention and ire of the original company. I'm no legal expert, however I do know that there is a responsibility of a business to either guard their IPs like a watchdog, or let their IPs be free like a bird. Any shade of grey in between those two extremes doesn't work well in court. There are distinct differences between POW World and Pokemon. There are other Mon type games that have come out, I'm thinking specifically of Digimon, the rival from way back in the day. There are no exact Pokemon in POW World, however there are a few PALs which might be a little too close for comfort. One of the many ways POW World is very different from Pokemon, other than the obvious morally gray area with subjecting a creature and putting them to work for you in labor camps, and in POW World you can capture human beings in PAL orbs. Another way POW World is different is that you don't have any evolution which is yet another way of POW World doesn't emphasize getting overly attached to individual PALs, just building your strongest ideal PAL. In some ways this gameplay is okay, in other ways it removed my interest in the PALs themselves. So much I literally view them like tools to be used for my means. Which contrasts dramatically to the happy world you see in Pokemon. When a game makes you get super philosophical about things from overanalyzing, it might be a sign it's time to play something else or take some time to reevaluate some personal values you have. Anyway, back to copyright talk. There's enough mixing of other qualities, mechanics, and features that I really do hope there isn't any legal action taken. Or at the worst, maybe they'll need to remove or change the designs of some pals to further distance themselves from Pokemon lookalikes. But we might look back on this video and think, huh, 
Too bad Pocket Pair didn't last very long against the monolith which is Nintendo. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But I want to root for the underdog. I want there to be more games which could be seen to encroach on the crazy popularity of Pokemon. Do we not think that competition drives creativity? If Pokemon Team actually had to compete, maybe we'd get better Pokemon games later on down the line. Or maybe the bigger company will buy out the smaller company, like we've seen so many times before. The world is a play, and we are but actors. But enough with my musing thoughts. Let's actually talk about the game, shall we? As of right now, there's not much of a story. Not in the obvious sense, anyway. There are optional collectible tablets which reveal a sort of story, lore, background from the tower bosses, and a random castaways journal, all of which can be read in the journal. The castaways journal reveals the musings of a random person who just clicked play game and had no background information on Power World. Arr. I chartered a boat out to the island alone. I crashed me boat in the fog. I found this strange device to record me journal entries and take pictures. Then I found these creatures. I've decided to call them pals. And then got attacked by bandits. I killed the bandits. What are these towers? What secrets does this world hold? You get the idea. Basically, the Castaway Journal entries are what we experience while playing through the game. Only it was written by someone on a roleplay server or something. I skimmed through the logs, but I have a tough time retaining anything because it's just not interesting. Never mind how I read them to you, I tried to read them in an interesting way for your amusement. Then you also find journal entries from the various tower bosses, aka this game's gym leaders. These logs are actually more interesting because they give you a bit more story about the tower bosses. The first boss you'll encounter is Zoe, and you'll get to hear about how she's the daughter of one of the bosses saved a Grizzbolt, and ended up becoming a boss herself, following in her father's footsteps. It's about as interesting as it can be to read about a character you will see once in your entire time playing through. If the story is supposed to become impactful in the future, there will need to be some major additions to the game so you can actually care about the bosses. And I just don't see that happening. Not in a game where the gameplay mechanics are so open-world oriented. The only people who are going to go out of their way to get these journals will be overachievers. The good news, or bad news, about the story in Pal World is that it's completely optional. You don't need to read any of these journal entries if you don't want to, which is perfectly fine. They're just in the game, scattered all across the world. There's a lot to say about gameplay. It's a question of balancing PAL workloads, managing PAL sanity and hunger levels, farming resources, increasing levels, and gaining technology. Once you've reached the end game, you try to farm the best PAL to get the best passive skills, then enhance that PAL by absorbing PALs of the same kind and using PAL souls. You gain access to better technology from leveling up. Then you spend technology points to unlock the stuff you want. You level up from doing a lot of different stuff, actually. Picking up items, crafting, killing other pals, and most importantly, capturing pals. Be it freeing them from cages, hatching them from eggs, or simply the classic old-fashioned get in the ball. You also get an increased bonus for capturing the same pal over and over until it maxes out at 10 captured. It was around this point that I realized, oh, Power World wants me to grind. So, in protest, I changed my game settings to maximize experience gained, turned off incubator times, and implemented other ease of life changes. Because I'm not made of time, Timothy! <coughs> <coughs> I have a full time job, and it's not making YouTube videos. You get technology points from leveling up and discovering fast travel points. At level 50, this becomes a problem, because you're level capped. At this point, if you are out of technology points, 
you need to go into dungeons to possibly get technical manuals as a reward at the end, which can be consumed to get technology points. There's another technology tree for ancient technology, which requires ancient technology points. The ancient points are rewarded from defeating tower bosses and alpha bosses, which are big powerful pals in the open world. While you're busy leveling up, you'll get stat points, which can be applied to health, stamina, attack, defense, work speed, and weight. While these stats are pretty self-explanatory, what we did was pump our points into weight, so we could carry more, stamina, so we could climb, run, and glide more, and then we put the rest into health, so we would get one shot less from Angry Pals. As you're chipping away at unlocking technology, you'll unlock various weapons and armor, gathering tools like axes and pickaxes, construction stuff, furniture, and even PAL upgrades, which are weapons and saddles, stuff for riding and combat. Obviously, armor will increase your defense, and sometimes apply other benefits like cold or heat resistance. You have four weapon slots, two accessory, head, body, shield, glider, and lastly, with an optional food slot if you've equipped a feed bag. There is a survival game element in Power World, with the player having health, shields, and hunger values. By all accounts, the player has the easier of the stats. Pals have a sanity meter. If the sanity meter gets low from working, stressful conditions, crappy beds, low quality food, and other stuff, the pals working at bases will develop injuries and neurological disorders. I'm not joking. Pals also have specializations for the type of work they do. Kindling, for helping with fires. Planting seeds. Handiwork, which helps crafting. Lumbering. Medicine production. Transporting, to move stuff on the ground over to the nearest chest. Watering. Generating electricity. Gathering. Mining. Cooling. And farming. Pals also have a partner skill, which can improve other stats, and some pals don't unlock this skill until you've unlocked the technology and crafted the respective partner item. Some pals will act as running, flying, and swimming mounts, while others will pick up a gun and shoot your enemies. Never mind the passive skills, which can be stuff like unstable, which means that the pal sanity drops 10% faster, or everyone's favorite workaholic, which means sanity drops 15% slower, it's the capitalist dream employee! Plus, there's three active skills, which are your battle moves, to harken back to Pokemon. You can teach pals more moves and switch them at will, but you can only have three active skills at a time. <sighs> so now would be a good time to acknowledge the rock, paper, scissors elemental chart. Some of it makes sense, like fire beats grass, grass beats ground, ground beats electric, electric beats water, and water beats fire. But there's a whole other section of fire beats ice and ice beats dragon. And then we throw out all reason and rationality as dragon beats dark, and dark beats normal. I mean neutral. But what happens when grass goes against electric or water? Nope. Anything not in that direct circle, just regular damage. So throw out all that logic you thought you knew from decades of Pokemon games. I do not like it, Sam I am. Since it strictly follows a circle, you'll need to know the element of the pal that you are battling and equip the moves beforehand. And I'm not that coordinated. I will not be playing Pal World long enough for it to be impactful. And unlike in Pokemon where you learn the importance of type matchups early on, they're just left by the wayside until you're wondering why your pal is being murdered at breakneck speed. The base building is so close to what I want. It's organized very well, you unlock better and better structures along with technology improvements. Early on my brothers and I collectively built a huge base out of wood. And then we were raided by fire pals who literally burnt down my house. It was, it was, it was reliving that PTSD from Minecraft, man. While building stuff, I find myself getting frustrated that I need to build a base structure. Then I fight the game to try to get it to do what I want. 
Sometimes I had to put corner pieces on walls before putting down stairs or a roof tile. You can't connect two bases built in separate locations. Or if you can, I can't line up the pixels just perfectly so they'll snap together. The only way I can build something sprawling an area is if the ground is flat to begin with. I experimented with several different structures. So far as it seems that as long as you can build the bases close enough together, you can build floors up as high as you want and expand out one extra tile. But if you can't build the platforms in the right place, you won't be able to complete the ceiling above you. I had this great stone project where I was going to try to build a farm on the second floor on top of a hill, but first off, I couldn't complete the center. And second, my pals are too stupid to figure out how to get up there. So instead, I just built this dope tower. But again, the takeaway is this. The building is almost satisfying. It's almost what I want out of a sandbox game. But it's just not there yet. Also, if you build stuff outside of your pal box base area, it's free game for anyone else to use and dismantle. And if the world has structured deterioration rate turned on, stuff falls apart outside of the base area circle. I'd like to include some notes about resource collection and automation in Pal World. This is a bigger mid to end game part of Pal World, but remember how I said Pal World seems to really be time consuming and grindy? Well, one of the ways to mitigate the grindage is by using pals to do that work for you. All hail capitalism! Are you tired of holding F to build your pal spears? What if I told you you can get your pals to do that for you? Are you tired of mining ore? What if I told you that you can get pals to do that for you too? The game went from, okay, I guess I'll go find more ore, to, is there a way to automatically farm these resources without me doing the work? And while I can't figure out how to get dropped resources like high quality pal oil under automated farming, the challenge shifts as you start to try to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. A few tips to remember. Look at your PAL's work suitability. Look at possible drops in your PAL deck. Remember, sometimes the only way to get a job done right is to do it yourself. But you can always search the internet to see if anyone else has had any solutions. The combat in Power World is interesting, but again, it doesn't really make for a satisfying experience. You fight side by side with one of your pals, but I found my own damage just so pathetic that I found it easier to just shovel berries into the mouth of my pal and let it do all the fighting for me. Sometimes hopping onto the back of the pal to reset cooldowns and blast away at bosses or whatever pal I'm trying to capture. You can craft yourself some weapons, but the only time I've ever used weapons is to squeak out a tiny bit of extra damage on bosses or soften up a pal before I capture it. I'm just saying, if my blue dragon looking thing does more damage than I do with an assault rifle, why would I waste the resources making ammo? And this all comes down to game balancing. Maybe in the future it'll be better balanced, but while I was playing, I found it easiest to just run around in circles and dodge whenever I became the target for attack. There's a couple interesting things to note about multiplayer. The best experience playing Pal World was cooperatively working with friends to build bases, gather resources, and explore the world. Hosting local games with your friends is hands down the best way to go, and the best way to experience Pow World. But for online servers, it seems like there's already the groundwork built for PvP in the game, with guild systems already implemented, and a natural built-in competition for resources and flat ground building space. Since there's only one map, there's a mad dash to build bases on the good spots. Either mining nodes, which we've all looked up to set pals up to farm for us, or the few nice flat land spaces, which upsets pals the least to navigate. 
I made a base on a public PAL world server one night, and logged back in the next morning to find out that wild pals had raided it and nothing remained. While not as heartbreaking as Rust, where unattended children broke in and called me names and swore over voice chat, it seems like maintaining bases on servers really would need more people playing and working collectively together to prevent it from being flattened. Even without PvP in the game right now. Probably more of a desirable gameplay feature for online communities and actual guilds. Not just a couple of friends with a few hours to burn. The problem at the time of this review is hackers and server DDoSing. Partially because of some uproar that I can't understand. People on the internet are just going to get mad over whatever they want, I guess. But I'll tell you this much. Big game companies don't care about you personally. All they care about is making their money. It's like trusting politicians to say and do whatever they can to keep their power. Companies only care about money and or power. But that goes well and beyond a simple review. In conclusion, I think POW World suffers from jack-of-all-trades syndrome. It has lots of great gameplay elements, but I've played creative sandbox building type games, like Valheim, Minecraft, The Forest, and even Raft. Those games implement it so much better. And I've recently played Pokemon, and having companions battling in those games is so much more satisfying. I think Power World has lots of potential, and of course I want it to be successful, but in its current state, I'd say just give it more time to cook. But if you're seeing it and you want to give it a try, definitely go for it. Especially considering that it's not even the price of a full AAA game. But if you're on the fence, give it more time. With some more polish, Pal Worlds could really be an awesome game and spearhead the genre away from the predominantly Nintendo-held properties. But that's what I've been thinking about with Pal World. Hopefully this review has been helpful. As always, I don't do myself any favors for making quick and easy videos because I keep having complicated opinions. I do really hope that this video is seen as being fair in its assessment. If you have any ideas of what I'm trying to say, let me know in the comments. I wish I had the gift of brevity. I like Power World, but there's just something which makes it not quite what I want. Thank you for watching. My name's Atratsu. I will see you in the next video. Take care.